The nation holds its breath. Yes, we're You're listening to The Green Machine, your Irish football news and nostalgia, where you, the fans, get to have your say. Nick and Martin here to join you as we reflect on Ireland's 1-0 loss to Australia in their opening game of the 2023 Women's World Cup. Martin, a great experience, wasn't it? It's great to be back on the world stage. Disappointing results. What are your first thoughts of the game? Yeah, disappointing result, obviously. But, you know, this is us on on the world stage. And, you know, this is a culmination of a fantastic... um, opportunity for the women's game and you know I thought they were like Vera had asked for them to be brave I think they were you know there must have been a lot of nerves entering into you know our first participation in the tournament um I thought I'd love to actually look back at the game and I have recorded it I, I did manage to catch bits and bobs of it but uh you know I want to watch it properly again because I, I think they were having a bit of a crack and they seemed quite laid back in the tunnel I don't know Rusha kind of quipped something in there but um it was quite funny I thought something they kind of had a bit of a giggle at some moment but you know, I think overall, you know, it's our first match at a major tournament with the women. Um, we were very, very unlucky not to put, I think we did deserve a draw overall. But um, there was moments in the game, I think it was getting away from us. And uh, I think they did well to keep in right to the end that we nearly did snatch that draw. Yeah, a decent performance. I mean, before the game, of course, Sam Kerr, the, the star player who we've been hyping up for the last couple of days, pulled out with an injury. She's going to miss the next game as well against Nigeria. Um, sadly, it was her replacement, her captain replacement, Steph Catley, he scored a second half penalty, so we're going to chat about uh, a bit about the game now. Uh, look, from my perspective, excellent performance. I mean, we're we're big into glorious failures in Ireland, aren't we? But I mean, to put it into context, Australia are one of the top top nations in in world football in, in the women's game. Host nation, seventy five thousand fans out there. Very very difficult atmosphere for the girls to go into. Really structured performance. You know, very very well organized. I think we kind of expected that with Vera Pau kind of going into the game. I think we struggled a bit in the final third. I think we did have chances to equalize. Sadly, didn't take them. Sadly, weren't clinical enough. But a lot of positives gone into the Canadian game. And it's, you know what, Martin? I think before the game, if you said to me, 1-0 uh, and a couple of chances towards the end to equalize, not, not to be a pessimist, but I probably would have taken it because this is a top Australian team. But before we get into it, Martin, I know you mightn't have um, have, have suffered this as much, but the, did you? I suppose you heard about the coverage on RTE, did you? Yeah, I did hear that, Nick, and I, I'm, I know you're you you were looking for reasons not to pay the license fee, so I think you, you found them again. <laughs> yeah, taking taking the words out of my mouth, Martin, uh, or putting words in my mouth rather. Yeah, so I I actually had a, a World Cup breakfast uh, with with three of my buddies here, um, three work colleagues because we're we're off work at the moment, and um, just to rub it in there, Martin. I know you were working hard. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, yeah, you were working hard during this game, but yeah, ju- just for anyone that didn't catch the game, there was. I'd say at least a five-second delay uh, with the audio. And RT in the headlines for a lot of the wrong reasons at the moment, aren't they? They didn't do their their case any good. I mean, such a shame as well. I mean, we, we George Hamilton returning to uh, commentate on Ireland in a World Cup in so many years. 21 years, in case Dave is listening. Not 23 years. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, I mean, geez, it was, it was bad enough with Steph Roach being on Colcom, but uh, when there's a five-second delay, it makes it even worse. <laughs> Bit... Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen it all on Twitter and stuff. I've seen people really complaining about, you know, the coverage and saying, you know, we, it's just just go without the audio and just watch the match. I mean, I, I was watching it on a on a phone basically, um, and I, I saw the I, I was watching it on ITV the, in England, so we've got the coverage. I mean, brilliant again. It just shows the rise of the women's game. Emma Byrne with the lovely Laura Woods in the studio there. And I don't think you're allowed to say that, Martin. Where we are, um, but also <laughs> no, fantastic. Lovely, we're all thinking, you know, we're all thinking the same. I love the dictation that uh, how she kind of is very professional as a as a um, host host presenter. But uh, yeah, brilliant to see Emma Byrne in there and, and some wonderful kind of lines from her uh, during the game as well. A halftime analysis, for example, she said, you know, Katie McCabe loves a full blooded blooded game, loves a challenge. Um, and what what would you expect? Because she's from Tala. I thought that was quite funny. Oh, for, for the English audience, except you know, English audience perhaps wouldn't know. But know what that kind of means. Well, we found it quite funny. Um, yeah. But um, and Olivia Tool, of course, was down pitch side before the game as well. I saw a little uh, the clip with her as well, interviewed and what it meant for Ireland to be on the world stage. So that was nice part of that coverage. But you know, overall, um, you know, on on the game, 
it was a massive thing. I think it was, we all saw that as a massive lift when we saw Sam Kerr not playing. I had picked her out as a danger player. And it's disappointing, actually, for the World Cup and probably for Australia as the host nation when they had that that news that she wasn't making it for the first game for them. Yeah. Well, well, you um, tipped her as a, the potential player of the tournament, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, and I think, you know, I think she will ha still have a part to play. I mean, you, you know, if you win a game in a group, you should probably go through. I would think that, you know, that, uh, that was a big test for Australia today, playing us. Um, but I think I think overall we done, done did really really well and, and it was you know we we got the team right didn't we 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 knew what Vera's starting lineup was going to be um, and I and I think they equipped themselves well because they they would have had a lot of nerves and I thought I thought they coped quite well and it's a really physical game I think I was more surprised at that than you know than anything really we we really got stuck in and we, we didn't we weren't afraid to put a boot in I mean if you look it doesn't seem like a physical game when we actually say there was one booking in it and. You know, I think you, you could probably have 10 guesses at who was booked in the two lineups. And I still think most people wouldn't probably guess Denise O'Sullivan. But she yeah, was... Well, well, I, well, well, Martin, I knew five seconds before uh, she got the yellow card that it was a yellow card. Uh, thanks, to, <laughs> thanks to RT. Um, yeah, no, I suppose it's it, yeah, very physical game. I think I think we were very well organized. Like we were very, very structured. There wasn't much space for the Australians to play much ball. Like most... Definitely in the first half, I think they had, was it 69% possession, something like that. But I mean, a lot of that was within their back three. Like they, they were trying to knock it around. Uh, Ruesha Littlejohn was excellent, you know, breaking up a lot of things. I think Denise O'Sullivan, she struggled a little bit with the pace. I, I, I see that the, um, I think it was either the Independent or the Irish Times have given her uh, player of the match. Uh, they gave her the highest rating. I didn't quite see that. No. I thought she looked a little bit off the pace, but I thought Littlejohn was, was just all over the pitch. Um, really, really energetic. Uh, you know, she she was on till the end. She won the oldest players on the team, and 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 she was absolutely excellent. You know, Katie McCabe as well, getting stuck in, having having her usual tenacious kind of performance. Just to give you an idea of the stats. And um, so possession wise, the Australians did uh, you know have a significant amount more. So sixty three percent overall compared to Ireland's thirty seven percent. Thirteen shots on target compared to Ireland's nine. Uh, sorry, thirteen shots compared to Ireland's nine, but two on target. And one for Ireland, six corners versus Ireland seven, and and most of those kind of came in the closing minutes, and twelve fouls for the Australians uh, versus Ireland's nine. So a very strong finish as well, Martin. But but in terms of the overall game, I mean, we we, we did see a game plan, didn't we? The whole idea was to stifle the Australians and to uh, I suppose to try and counter attack. But I I think one of the glaring issues. Uh, is the final third, isn't it? I mean, we seem to lack a little bit. I mean, during the game, we were obviously in communication and you were a little bit disappointed that Amber Barrow perhaps didn't get a game. Yeah, yeah. Before I come on to that, though, yeah, th that is the problem, though. We we're so defensive-minded, and, and you know, pr you know, even Emma Byrne had said, you know, we are playing, we will be playing a back five. Th that's it. You know, yeah. you know, she said the lineup shows three at the back. But it's a back five, and, and they really did. It was a fantastic battle, wasn't it, on the left with uh, Kate McCabe? Yeah, uh, very physical. Yeah. Rusa, and, and that was a, a, a massive, um, a, a real physical battle, and they were, you know, they Nothing was kind of shit, you know left behind, left out there. I think they they really went at each other. Um, but I think the problem is when you're so deep like that, and I think that that's a disappointing thing. Rusha basically sat in front of the the back three, very very deep as well. I, I don't think we have enough to players who can bring the ball out at the moment. I think I had a fantastic preview actually saying that that Ethan Mannion is the one who will do that for us in future, and that's yeah. why she's going to be a massive miss. I thought the back three, though, were fantastic. Um, you know, very, very brave. Fahi, uh, Louise Quinn, that's what I kind of expected. I thought Megan Connolly as well. I thought, uh, for me, uh, actually, I, I'd said, I thought she was our player of the game. Oh, she was excellent. Great with set pieces and, yeah. and really... And unlucky, really... unlucky not to score as well, Martin. I mean, very, with that very, kick, yeah. I mean, it, it looked good, didn't it? I, I mean, when, when it happened, I actually thought it was a handball because they, they were all appealing for the corner and mm. I thought it was a handball. I thought, I thought... But I mean, the great technique, really good delivery. I think I think the first couple, um, she, she didn't quite hit the... She didn't quite hit the players, did she? She kind of nah. left them a little bit short. But after that, they were just she, she's a lovely float of, uh, delivery to her, doesn't she? Yeah, and very I mean, short run corner. up as well. I thought it's a yeah. short run up, but she gets that. But she generates that power, like you know, but she near, nearly I, scored from a corner as well. Yeah, towards the end, I thought I thought she she was very very good. But I th again, the point though, if you've got the back three and then you've got Rusha sitting in there, you know your outlet is Caruso, and yeah, for all the work she did up there looking after the ball. She was then sloppy when she was laying it off and we lost the ball and there was a lot of turnovers with that. And that was kind of disappointing from her. But, you know, she's so isolated. I wouldn't really hold that against completely. her too much. No, I, I'm really surprised, isolated. though. I, I, I'm so, I, I'd love to know if there's an injury to Amber Barrett because I just think, you know, I watched that preview, you know, the, the show they had on RT last night 
which was fantastic, showing the whole journey they'd been on. And, you know, her, is, especially with the key goal and things in Hamden. And and yet she did play really well in the in the pre well warm up game uh World Cup warm up game against Zambia and she got yeah, two goals and goals, she yeah. has this knack of scoring and I just think I, I was expecting Caruso kind of to last seventy minutes and then put her on and let them run at them and and it just seemed a little bit different and it, it was a little bit like we ran out of ideas and and weren't going to give her a chance I mean at the end Louise Quinn was up top Lucy Quinn was there as yeah. well and and they would it just seemed a little bit of I don't mean this to be kind of disparaging, but it it just seemed a little bit like ran out of ideas. I and mean, oh, you put your big guy up front now, and 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 is that in the game plan, it, or is it just like oh, we're just going to go for it now? And I don't know. If, it, yeah, if I, I was the striker, yeah. I'd be going, hang on a second, how come I'm not getting a run in here? And you're yeah. going Louise Quinn up front. You can see exactly why Carissa started. Like Carissa is really kind of a smash bang player. Like she's she's very much a, a link player, and she's very very robust, and she's good at holding the ball up, linking it up. As you said, she was sloppy. Amber Barish and and a player who isn't isn't in the squad, Leanne Kiernan. There, you know, and I, I mean, hasn't played much football in the last couple of years, so I think it was justifiable that she wasn't in the squad. But but the likes of her and and the likes of Barrett, who is in the squad, they really play when you're on the front foot. They they get in behind. They're very very difficult to play against. They're playing between the defenders. That's what we needed. You know, the the Australians were in all great shakes today. You know, I, I thought they were poor today. I thought the defense was very sloppy, miss hitting a lot of a lot of. Um, balls misjudging a lot of balls at the back barrett does get in behind barrett mm. she can peel away from defenders i think i think this was the the opportunity for her to come in i mean um you can see with abby larkin like she she came in she was very very direct she was absolutely excellent hard excellent. to believe she's only hard to believe she's only 18 you know absolutely fearless and i think the whole game plan from there was get larkin to attack the fullback whip the balls in which she did and have um have louise quinn uh having a go and, and, and trying to get her head in it where really you needed maybe Barrett and Larkin maybe up top where they're both pulling away from the defenders because they were having a lot of joy Larkin was having yeah. a lot of joy just pulling away from everything and and Barrett would have done the same down the middle so it was an unusual one it's, it's rare that we we criticize Vera Pao but I think when you're going for the jugular and you have a center forward on the bench who's very very adept at international level I, I think you have to go for that you, you can put Quinn you can put Quinn up top if you're, if you're going for it and you have a back three, you can afford to put a centre half up and down. You know, we used to see it with John Terry, didn't we, mm. years ago? Um, and, and even, um, you know, some some centre halves kind of in the men's game where, where they go up and they, they come back down, but they're not kind of left up there as a centre forward. So putting someone out of their position, you know, you, you can only expect a certain amount of out- output from that, can't you? So that, that was a bit disappointing. You know, I think I think Marisha Shave as well. Um, disappointing game for her, not to be overly negative. Obviously, the penalty, very very sloppy penalty. Um, you know, looked like it was a, it was a combination of of a mild push and and a bit of a coming together of the player's own legs, a bit of a tangling of her legs. And I think after that, she, you know, her um, and sadly enough, uh, you know, sadly enough for for Shave, her her head really dropped. I mean, there was a couple yeah. of balls over the top, some excellent balls over the top, and she just stopped running. You know, she just stopped running. She was pulling out the runs. You could see the head completely dropped. And I think at that stage, that would have been the opportunity for Pau just just to whip her off. But she left her on a, a, a little bit longer. Um, you know, like she she left her on another ten minutes or so after, and and you know she was she was doing similar things, pulling out her runs. I wouldn't say she wasn't giving her all. I think it was more a morale kind of aspect. And um, you know, I, I think just some certain calls were a little bit questionable. Uh, I mean, look, Vera's much more adept at making tactical decisions than we are, Martin. But I, I think there was a couple of bits that, that probably could have been done a little bit differently, especially when Australia were, were kind of on the ropes for the last few minutes. Yeah, I, I think there was a moment, I think the 10 minutes after the goal, actually, I think we were kind of shocked. And I think there was a little bit of panic set in. And, you know, there was a spell actually in the first half as well. And I saw we were really under the cosh at the back. And I think Nee Fahey was kind of saying, calm down, calm down. Like for some reason, Courtney Brosnan was taking goal kicks at 100 mile an hour. And we put the ball to Rusha and she wasn't even ready. And, and and we gave away possession. We were very sloppy in possession um, at times. We just don't look after the ball good enough at this level. And, and they kept turning that over against us. And we couldn't even get out at some stage in the first half. I think, I think as I said, 10 minutes after the goal, I think I was worried. I, I said, this could easily be 2-3. So they've got to manage this storm at the moment. And to be fair to them, they did. And they really got into the game. And I, I think we... Look, we really want us to do well at this tournament. But this team is going to be a team in transition. And I'm not just sacking off this World Cup because I think we could get through the group. But yeah. we look comfortable, think, Martin. We, we, yeah, we look we comfortable we, this we look level. We look good we? at this level. And, and, and what I would say that my only concerns now are 
and they were before the game as well, was how taxing was that monumental effort of Rusha? Has played three games in the league, in the Women's League this this year. Is she going to be able to do that turnaround in, in this short term? time frame um you know i was i was amazed really that lily ag probably didn't replace her at one stage but to be fair to her she had a very good game i was very disappointed with denise o'sullivan i did put that on our message chat as well i just think but to be fair to her she they were big, big and physical the australians and they actually one of them done a fantastic yeah. turn around she doesn't look right did she? she 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 didn't look right because we we, we know denise is a, is a very imposing midfielder you know very very tidy on the ball great vision going forward she she just she wasn't at the races today, and and I think part of that is probably whatever injury. No thing. matter how, no, that injury, no, yeah. No matter no matter how mild that injury is, I think it's whatever she sustained. Maybe she wasn't quite right because we we as we said we know her for putting the foot in the ball for using possession well. Any kind of media outlet that I've had a look at, they they've rated her as one of the top players. Even on BBC, mm. even on BBC, she's rated as one of the top players. She. she she tried to make a couple of little breaks. You know, it, it was scrappy in the first half and she tried to make a couple of breaks and she was trying to move the ball forward and, and you know, th those kind of bits and pieces. She was trying to transition things and you can see that that was clearly the game plan. But in possession, quite sloppy, Um, you know, really struggled with the physicality of the game. I don't think that's all down to her. I think maybe she has been rushed back a little bit, but it, it was disappointing. You, ne you need, I think, to get a result against Australia, you need Denise O'Sullivan and Katie McCabe at 100%, and they, you know, they were they were just drowned out by the Aussies. Yeah, they were yeah drowned I, out. I think that we were, they were targeted. They weren't going to let them do that, and they know what they are, our key players, and probably the game plan is you can stop them, but that's it. And that's why I love Abby Larkin now. I think I would be, I think there's a massive opportunity for her now at this World Cup. Um, Fearless. You know, coming in there. Yeah, and that's and that's what they said when she come on, you know, on the commentary that I could hear. They, they, you know, that, that was it. She, she took her opportunity, and like I said, I don't want to sack off this World Cup, but the team is going to transition and develop. And we're going to have some great players coming back in there. Ethan Mannion, Jamie Finn's going to have a part to play. Ella Malloy, I know, former guest of the pod. You know, you know, I've, I've spoken to actually people about Ella Malloy saying, you know, they thought she should have gone uh, gone to the World Cup. She is fit. But, you know, Abby's got in there in her position and, and probably many of us may be thinking, oh, she's so young, she might not have an opportunity to play. But amazing when she did. I thought Lucy Quinn was excellent as well when she came on. You know, they, they, they're going to take their opportunities, these girls. They are brave, like Vera asked them to be. Um, I, I just, I, I, I'm quite happy with it overall. You know, we're still in it. We haven't, goal difference is going to be massive, I think, in the group. I think losing 1-0 to a set, you know, we didn't concede from play. Uh, Courtney has made a few saves, didn't she? She was called into action a few times. Yeah, She looked quite comfortable overall. I thought She looked more comfortable was... than the Australian keeper, I thought. I thought, I thought they... She did. Yeah, the Australian keeper. She was catching everything, but she wasn't coming for everything. I thought she was. Um, thought she was a little bit shaky. And and uh, as you said, Martin. I mean, the fact that it was a, a dodgy enough penalty that that kind of saw them through says a lot. Yeah, I mean, I know you're. I think RTE said it was, and I think Tony Donaghy. I've what I've heard, and people messaged me going, "How's Tony Donaghy thinking that's coming together with legs?" It was a really soft, a really poor penalty to concede. So yeah, I, I wouldn't have it that. It, you know, it was a stupid mistake from her, and you know, it was it was almost it was not a couple of feet. And we would have had the same penalty for the Lucy Quinn challenge at the end. That we exactly, got the free yeah. kick. It was very, very similar, you know, pushing down on the back. And, and you can't be naive for that. She probably looked for it, the girl, to be fair, with the run. It was a clever run. And she probably stopped. And, and what do you do if you're behind her? You, you put your hands up. So I, I think overall, I'm satisfied with it. I just hope the physicality of the game, because we more than matched them. Um, I think yeah. I hope that doesn't take its toll on some of our players now. They have to rest, recover. Um you know, enjoy the enjoy this World Cup as well. You know, I, I've heard, I've been listening to a lot about the World Cup, and you know, even watching that show last night, the the, the great story of how they qualified, a fantastic opportunity for them. You know, it showed all the negativity, obviously the crease low tragedy. Um, you know, but then it showed the massive positive Amber Barrett scoring the goal, and then it showed you know the the, the celebrations, the song, the you know the the, the rebel song. And even it talked about Vera Power picking the squad. It was all very very negative, and we we want these girls to enjoy this World Cup and I think Vera was showing signs of strain before the recently as well and now you know they're seeing this amazing support groundswell behind them I think hopefully everyone listening in Ireland and watching in Ireland is going to get behind them now and know that we really competed we, we showed we can play at this level that's what I really want to get that message across there because you know I, I, I'm really looking forward to the next game already and you may make the point um, which I know you might want to elaborate on, but you said yeah. that it's more enjoyable watching the women at the moment than the men. They're likable. You can engage with them. You know, I know it's sometimes a bit cliche, a bit yeah. corny, cheesy, but I love it, to be honest. It, it's fun watching Ireland play again. And, you know, we are the great underdogs, but, you know, I think we're going to get, you know, we're going to have moments at this World Cup. 
Yeah, now, now to elaborate, I didn't necessarily say watching them, but I suppose, um, I suppose my point was that listening to the or seeing the, um, you know, seeing them around the camp and seeing them interact with the fans and seeing the, I suppose, not seeing the narcissism and the the egotistical nature that that not all the lads, not all the lads. Look at our national captain; he's probably one of the biggest role models in world football, I think. Yeah. But um, you know the you you look at the the women's game at the moment and they're having a laugh, and um, they're enjoying themselves. There's a human side to it, and you look at you look at all the headlines in the men's game at the moment, and it's all about the Saudi league. So I th- I think that's what I was kind of getting at, you know. Um, I, I but, think that as well. Nick, but, but there is it, there it, there is a great buzz already already uh, in the tournament, isn't there? Wasn't it brilliant as well seeing the national anthem sang so passionately and it, including all the subs. And all the girls who have, to be honest, well, come well here's in the thing. In the last here's, seven here's the thing, Martin, and I, and I've been saying this for years, and and it's something that really pisses me off. You, you, the Irish lads, and it was a shame as Coleman said before. Oh, we don't sing the anthem because we're so focused. And right. I know I've just said he's one of the biggest role models in world football, but that's the one thing I won't I won't agree with on, on with, with Seamus Coleman. The other thing is that they don't sing the anthem properly. You know, you can you can see it. Robbie Keane has whatever a hundred and something caps and. You know the amount of times that it flicked by him, and you can see because I I know the 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 anthem off by heart would have yeah. been drilled into me in school, kicked the shot into me in school, um <laughs> until I knew it. Like you know, so um I know it, and and a lot of people know it, and you can see that they're not singing it, and they don't all sing it. The the fact that they they don't go shoulder to shoulder as well. So many national teams do that. I know that's the whole tradition of facing the flag. Put the fucking flag at the bench. You know, simple solution. So little Which things like that. Done. They have done that underage tournaments. They yeah, they have done they that. Yeah, behind the bench. So. Yeah, yeah, they have done that. But I, but I mean, the, the the thing as well is like before a game, you want as much momentum going into the game as possible. And sometimes our lads, I'm not saying that they're not, because again, the whole thing of being focused and yada yada yada. But you know, when you have a bit of momentum, when you have a bit of togetherness uh, going into a game and going into a kickoff, it it, it certainly stands you. And the girls definitely brought that in. But a funny one on that, Martin, with the anthem. Because that because of that five second delay, and I hadn't actually realized that there was that delay at this stage. The the anthem had finished and the girls were still singing, but there was no music. And I remember right. thinking, and I remember thinking, the fucking disrespectful Australians, they fucking cut that short on purpose. So so we'd be rattled. And I was giving it because obviously I had a couple of buddies over and I was like, the fucking state of them and all this kind of thing. And then I realized that actually it was it was Ortiz's fault that they they delayed it. But um there was There's me. All, there always is trying to rattle. Fair. To be fair to the players, there always is the footage. You always get a few seconds. It's never lip synced completely because they're obviously filming it sometimes off a screen. Ah, uh, don't make excuses, man. Don't I make am, excuses for it. A little bit of a bugbear that I've noticed, but no, I'm not obviously defending. I, I, I'll support Cork Todd, of course, um, but he's not in the production and, and stuff. But you know, I, I just think overall we've got to be satisfied with that as a first game in in the thing. And, and it looked amazing, didn't it? The crowd. You could yeah. hear during the game. I know you might have been on a delay, but you could hear. Um, the Irish fans really singing, and I know a lot of lads are over there, aren't they, on their gap years or whatever they're doing? But, um, Have the amazing, there, Martin. <laughs> that's it, yeah. I mean, look, I know you know, I'm very proud of being a ch- club chairman of Risk London, and uh, like we've got um, some some members of the club uh, are, are down there already, traveled down there. Uh, Stephen and Jay McNulty, I'm gonna give a shout out to them. Paul Boyle as well. Paul Boyle's a really interesting one, Donny Gould Paul, he's been familiar to some people. We, we actually think that Donny Gould Paul. Paul Boyle, he, we actually, someone messaged me who's, with, well, that's actually Steve McNulty messaged me down there. It, do we think it's a question of some of our listeners, perhaps? If they know anybody who has been at every group game of Ireland playing at a major tournament, because we think Paul Boyle has, which is yeah. an amazing thing. And that includes the men's, obviously, and the women's. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, I think Gary Spain will probably be another one uh, who possibly could claim that. But yeah, there's a few. And, and, and I thought it was fantastic listening to off the balls coverage of it as well, seeing RTE news clips. You, people have an amazing crack down there, to be honest. And, and that's it. You're going to get a lot of fun with Ireland. They're singing in the pubs, um, getting behind the, the team and stuff. There's a few too many rugby shirts on show, if I'm going to be critical. <laughs> um, and, but yeah. Um, it's yeah, it's gonna. I think it's just. I hope now people will see that we came really, really close today. We played really, really well. We deserved a draw, I think, overall. Didn't get it, but this team, I think, will get results for us over there. And I think there will be a bit of an adventure for us. Yeah, going for Martin. So, Canada on Wednesday, reigning Olympic champions, very, very strong team, one of the best players to, to ever grace the women's game, Christine Sinclair. How do you think we're going to fare? Do you think we'll be absolutely shattered? after today or do you think we're going to take a bit of heart and momentum and hopefully get a result against the canadians 
I mean, it's going to be. Well, I'm going to watch their game, obviously, against Nigeria to see how, how good they are. Um, I'd expect them to beat Nigeria, to be honest. Um, and we'll know more. And we'll know the dangers and stuff. And I, you know, I, I'm, we probably have dodged the bu- bullet in a way that Sam Kerr wasn't there today. And hopefully, if she gets back in action now, she might be able to, you know, do the do the damage against them, both of them teams, to kind of do us a favour. Um, I think it'll be very tough against Canada, but we we shouldn't fear anything. Got to remember as well, the travel is going to be a different thing for them to to sort out as well. It's outrageous, so I'm just isn't hoping, it? Yeah, I'm hoping they're just going to get rested up now, and and you know. The first few games of World Cup, not everyone gets into it. Um, even like, you know, watching England, the Lionesses, France, it takes a while to see all every team, doesn't it? And then you we're around again. You know, we'll have seen the round the next round of games comes. And it sometimes takes a bit of a while to get the tournament going. And people will probably forgot how we got on in our first game. Uh, people who are not familiar with Ireland. So yeah, I, I'm hoping that, you know, we'll 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 have a good rest now and get ready and and it hopefully all the kind of adrenaline and build up and excitement of the build up will kind of die off a little bit that they're not under so much pressure and they can really focus on the, the tactics and the football inside of it. Cause I think that's what Vera will want to be doing, relishing that challenge. Um, because you know, it was a massive occasion today. Let's never forget that it to, to be taking part in our first ever tournament. Um, I think they really acquitted themselves well. And yeah, it was just a weird one, wasn't it? Going to bed last night and you're, you, I was watching, Tony O'Donoghue on the news and him him saying, well, you know, tonight, your our time, you know, he, he's up there in the morning, basically going, well, it's a long day on them and we're we're going to bed and then waking up in the morning. So to, to watch the game. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to enjoy this World Cup, though. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly enjoying it already. And, and we will be back with with plenty of coverage. We'll be doing our match uh, previews and, of course, our match reviews. We will be back possibly before Tuesday, but we definitely will be back on Tuesday with our match preview for Ireland versus Canada in their crunch game in the second game of the Women's World Cup. So we're going to leave it there, folks. Uh, as always, make sure to subscribe uh, to your to our podcast wherever you're listening, whether that be on Spotify, Apple, or elsewhere. And make sure to check out our socials, which are all in our descriptions wherever you're listening to your podcast. So all the best and take care.